Hi everyone, it's me. Um, I saw an article in uh, one of those old Christmas magazines and I thought I would try to uh, recreate it. Um, what they have, I believe, is a dowel, if I remember right, because I don't have the magazine on hand. Um, but I don't have a dowel that I can use. So I had thought um, I used the last of my aluminum foil today, and uh, this was what was left. So I thought this would be a really good idea to use. It's about, probably, let me see, and it's a little, probably about 13, 14 inches long. But I don't want what I want to do with it as tall because it's going to be, it's going to stand up like this. And to me, that's a little bit too tall for what I want. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut this down. Let's see. To about two thirds of the uh, length. See, there's a foot. So it's probably about 12 and a half, maybe 13 inches long. So I'm going to mark down about four inches. I'm going to cut this down because what I'm also doing is using up a bunch of my Christmas paper scraps. And in doing that, I just thought it would be a really great way to uh, see if I can do it with this. I don't know if I'll be able to use my, because this is a really hard, um, what do you call it, cardboard. I may not be able to use my X-Acto knife, but we'll try. Yeah, it's working. My measurements are just a little, or my cutting is a little bit off. Just a little bit. But I saw this picture. Actually, I'm not even sure it was in a magazine. It might have been something on Pinterest I saw. There we go. And I thought, what an awesome way to... Um, use up Christmas, you know, scraps. And you can do this for any theme you want. Uh, there we go. But, you know, since the holidays are coming up, and I had, oh gosh, this whole bag was full. I mean, packed. I've still got a lot of room left in it now. But um, with all kinds of Christmas papers and, and things like that. This might almost be too thick. But let's see. So now we've got... Uh, it's about eight and a half inches long. <clears throat> and I've never done this before. And it may not work, but we're going to give it a try. Put this back up. Now, what I did was I went through all of my Christmas papers and, you know, all my scraps and kind of sorted them into uh, not quite coordinating colors, but, um, you know, so they kind of match and they don't look so crappy. And I just started making strips. See, I made them, um, this was about six inches. Oh, let me see. 
No, it's about eight and a half inches right here. Eight, eight and a half inches. And then I worked my way down from eight and a half. I think I went to, no, seven inches. Well, eight and a half, seven inches, six inches, five and a half, five, four and a half, four, three and a half, and three. And honestly, I may not have enough strips and I may have to cut some more. Because it really doesn't look like I, I have. I cut enough. But here's the six and the six and a half. Here's the four. Here's the, here's the eight. <sighs> so my thought process from what I understand, I'm going to set those off to the side. I'm going to get an old pair of scissors. I'm going to open it up and I'm going to curl the paper just in one direction. So let's see if it works. Because <laughs> I'm not a real, I don't know how to, I've never really curled paper. So let's see if it works the same. Yeah, it works about the same as ribbon. It just takes a little bit more. And you have to be careful that you don't, um, you know, cut through the paper. And I think thinner and thicker paper will handle differently. So the point I'm trying to do is, let me fold this up, is I'm going to make a Christmas tree out of scrap paper. I don't know if this will work, but we're going to try. And I got my glue gun going, except I have something on the cord, so I've got to move it. There we go. And I'm just going to try this out. If it does work, then I probably um, won't use hot glue because hot glue and paper just for some reason just doesn't last very long. All right, so I'm going to curl all these. These might be a little too long for the bottom. And I'm going to do a couple rows around the bottom. I'm going to glue it all the way around for the lower end of the Christmas tree. So let me do that and I'll be right back. That's kind of what it looks like. And it's up to you if you wanted to add more, you know, to make it fuller or just leave it less. So, okay, so for now I'm going to go the next size up. And the next size up I have is the six and a half. And then the six, and I really don't think I've got enough of these. So I may have to dig out some more scrap paper and cut some more. Yeah, I think I'm going to have to do that. Okay, so let me set these aside. I need the six and a half size now. out my bag of scraps. <clears throat> Those aren't quite scraps. So let's see. These are six by sixes, so I'm not going to get any from my pages that are six by six. So let's just put those off to the side. This doesn't match my colors. So, I may have to actually cut it from a, a bigger piece. But just to show you, um, I did use a whole bunch of scraps. It took me probably maybe an hour to cut them all out. Okay. Do one this way. Yeah, why not? Okay, so we wanted 
Uh, we'll go seven and a half. And I'm cutting them three quarters inches wide. Let me cut off that jagged edge. At the... There we go. Now, I think what would be really cool is if instead of just cutting these, you um, you did them in uh, like you tore the pages so you'd have that ripped edge. But I would worry if doing that. Um, it wouldn't tear the paper when you tried to curl it. But it would be really cool if we could, right? Yeah. So I'm cutting these about, like I said, about three quarters inches wide. Okay, so let me get these finished cut up and I'll be right back. Okay, what I decided to do was I have some I had some spare pages that were um, in a 12 by 12 pack that I had gotten for one reason or another a while ago and these pages were ones that I hadn't used so I thought to break up all of this green on the bottom um, this has got words well, you don't see it very well but I, there we go. Got words on it. <clears throat> and it's a little bit thinner than the pages I had that I used the first time. So it doesn't take as much to curl it. But I got to thinking, these are only one-sided. If you wanted a, you know, a little bit more depth, you can always use double-sided paper. But with the way this is curling up, I may not need to because a lot of the underside, which in some of this is, is all white, um, you won't see it. Oops, I dropped it. Okay. Well, I wanted to give the bottom row a little bit of depth because... The other strips that I cut from my scraps um, are all patterned paper. They're not just straight up green. So to put a little bit more interest, I decided to just, I'm still doing it on the bottom row, but it's not just going to be all green. Honestly, I haven't even counted. I think there might be about 15 or 20 strips of green. And like I said, this is just a trial. I don't know if this is going to work, so I'm using hot glue. I normally do not use hot glue, not for paper. Okay, just a couple more for this, for this row. I think I missed one. That's okay. What's cool is even if I have extras of these left over that I cut, make it more uniform and go all the way up, I can always trim these down to the size I need, you know. There we go. And one more. Yeah, if this works, you know, cool. And I didn't even need with as wide as the hole is on this, okay? And then the weight on both sides with the paper. Um, 
I'm missing one right in there. So let me put one more. Anyway, but with the weight and the balance of the paper on both sides or all the way around, it keeps it from tipping and I don't need to put a base on. Oh, there we go. All right, so how does that look so far? Oh, it looks like I missed one over here too. Well, <clears throat> but what's, oops, that one ripped, held it too hard. What's cool about this is you can do any theme, any colors, you can coordinate it, you can mix match it, you can, you know, do whatever you want to match it to the decor you have in your own, in your own home. Or you can make it for somebody else. Things like these would be really cool as a, like a centerpiece in a baby shower or something, like a Christmas shower. Or uh, even if it was regular, you could do like baby papers and just make a little tree and then do a raffle at the end of the night or the end of the end of the party. And at the bottom, there's a number. And whoever wins either gets to keep the tree or the centerpiece, whatever you're using, or you could tuck you know, surprises in the little hole and there's all different kinds of things. Okay, so we got that. Let's start with this one. And this paper is thinner, so I won't need to cut or curl it as much or as many times. And let's just go up a level. And you use shorter pieces as you go up so that the tree will decrease in width, making it, you know, hereby look like a tree. As I said, I've never done this before. I think I needed to bring that up just a little bit, so let me pull that off. Because honestly, I can hardly see it down there. There we go. That's better. A little higher. And if you don't like the base of what the tree looks like, you know, like the cardboard, this itself, you can paint it beforehand. What I plan to try on, you know, to try to do is between each layer of paper strips, I want to uh, get some ribbon and wrap it in there. Now it looks like when I'm putting these together, um, they're really wide apart, but I'm doing the same thing I did with the first one where I went around and I did one row, you know, one round, and then I went back and filled in the spaces between, like right in here. And that helped get some even coverage. See, I'm bringing them right up close together when I'm putting them on the on the tube, right? They're really close together. But when you're looking at it up here, um, they look far apart. So I'll come back through and put more in there. Like I said, I've never done this, so I really hope it works. I hope it looks cool because, you know, it already does to me. Uh oh. Okay, so I'm going to finish this and I'll be right back. Okay, so I did that round and I want to add a little pop of color. And I had a chunk of this, or like little poinsettias with music background. Music background you can't see for some reason. So. I'm just adding a little pop of color. <clears throat> I 
It's not quite looking Christmassy enough for me. And I want that Christmas feel, you know? I'm going to put one more right there. These are some of the strips I've already cut. <clears throat> now this one, I'm not doing, you know, every other one. I'm just doing maybe every two, I believe. There we go. You see, even though there's a lot of greens in here, there's a little bit of red. A little bit of red popping up. <clears throat> I did that all the way around. This one, this one was funny when I was curling it. You see how it kind of went wonky and lopsided? <clears throat> see if I can fix that and just roll it up. Oh, another thing, if you didn't want to test your metal on trying to, you know, curl paper with uh, scissors, you can always take a pencil and wrap it around, hold it, kind of twist it tight, and then let it go. Let me see if I can get one of these. Let's do this one. See if it'll work with a pencil. That's how we used to curl paper in school, right? You can do it this way. Depending on how tight you want it. See, that curled it pretty good. And at the end. And then just hot glue it in there. <clears throat> I'll find another one. I said sometimes when you're doing oops, when you're doing scraps, you won't necessarily have enough of the same pattern to, you know, complete an entire project. But you might have a bunch that just look good together, that coordinate together, that um, you know, that just do really well. <clears throat> and that's what I did when I was going through all my scraps because I really did have a lot. wants to curl wonky. See that? So let me add a couple more of these until I run out and then we'll hit the next layer and I will be right back. Okay so so far Now the next layer I'm going to add some more solid color to bring up some of the coloring from the bottom up. <clears throat> Not a lot, but enough to kind of tone it back a little because I'm not one that likes extra busy designs. Um, I'm more of a simple elegance type of a person. So yeah, I'm just going to add some solid color to balance it out a little. Oh, and I will say, some papers curl easier than others, you know. I don't know if that has to do with how the paper weave is. Um, some I've found that I've even still had to use a pencil after the scissors because... 
just don't want to rip the paper when I'm trying to curl it. The whole point of keeping scraps is to be able to use them because, you know, you're always thinking, well, I'll use that. That's a nice piece. I'll keep that. I can use that for something. And then you end up with a trash can full, you know, a 30-gallon trash can full of paper scraps that, oh, you can use, but you never do. <clears throat> so... And these got pushed down, so I'm going to push them back up. There we go. Okay. Let's see how... And this one got moved, so I'm going to pull it back over. And this one didn't stay curled from the scissors. So I'm just going to take the pencil, and I'm going to roll it up loosely. And then I'm going to kind of pinch. And... Look at that. Same with this one. This one didn't stay curled with the uh, scissors. And some of them do, some of them don't. There we go. And they want to scoot under each other. This one needs to roll up a little bit more. And you can work can work this how tight how loose how many colors anything you want this one fell so I'm gonna bring it back up <clears throat> and it's all about your own creativity your own designs your own paper whatever you feel uh, speaks to your heart speaks to your soul or speaks to your pocketbook in case, you know, you sell these or <laughs> whatever. But, uh... And then you don't even have to curl them as much as this. You can kind of just leave them out. I like them curled. I like them looking puffy and kind of soft. I'll show you the side view here in just a second. There we go. See, there's a the side view. And as you fill in the papers, you know, and you find bald spots, you can always go back in and fill those in. So now on to the next level. Oh, I was still doing some color. And then, you know, when you're done, you don't even have to just leave it all paper if you don't want. I know, uh, I've gone to like the Dollar Tree or Walmart and I've bought Christmas picks that I stick in my Christmas tree as part of my decorations. And sometimes I'll get one that just doesn't quite match, so I won't use it, but I'm not going to throw it away. I'll set it aside. Usually when it gets set aside, that means it's going to my craft bin. <clears throat> Actually, I want to curl this around the pencil. Then you think, well, you know, I'm not making a bouquet. I'm not you know, doing any sort of floral arrangement. So why would I want to keep a pick I'm not using in one of those two things? And I will show you here in just a minute. Let me set this aside. Well, well, let me get one more in there and then I'll reach behind me and grab that pick. I'll show you why it ended up in my craft bin instead of my Christmas bin. thing in there, dadgummit. Oh. Okay. One more in here. Alright, let that dry for just a second. You see how that looks so far? It's pretty cool from the side, too. Alright. 
<clears throat> okay, so these are the ones that I have. I have that one. It's off to the side. I've got a silver one. And then I've got one that's green that's got little red ornaments in it. Okay, and I, these were, well, these say $2.99, which means I probably got them. Yeah, I got these at Hobby Lobby, but I never buy anything full price. Hobby Lobby, I always do it when the item is 50% off. So, let me pull that off. Okay. Now, if you're making a miniature tree, or like even when uh, I make my coffee filter Christmas trees, I've got some videos. I've got a couple videos, I believe, on making a coffee cup or coffee filter Christmas tree. That's that's the word. But look how small these are. Okay. Say for instance, you wanted to not just leave this as is, right? You wanted to decorate it up a little bit. Take one of these. It's on wire. Let me get my wire cutter. I know that'll probably do it, but um, I don't like to abuse my uh, craft tools. Made a bunch of foam. Oh, wrong one. Wire cutter. That won't work. There we go. My jewelry supplies in there. Okay. See something so simple, so small, so elegant. And that was stupid. Hmm. Look, you've got a Christmas ornament. It's silvery and glittery. So when it's all done, you can add little silver embellishments and spruce it up that much more. So that's why I keep my spare picks. And even if I see one in the uh, in the store, but sometimes you know if you buy them. I do not know if you will be able to see this or not. Pull it up close enough. See if I can find. Okay, like right here. Down here at this one. You see at the bottom of this one right here? Sorry, my nails look atrocious. And then right here, where the glitter has come off. Even if, you know, there's pieces that are like that, that would be the side I would glue down to the tree. But, okay, so, ooh, I really burnt myself on that one. All right, so I'm going to finish this up really quick, all the way up to the top before we get to the tree topper. And uh, I will be right back. Okay, so I've got it done all the way up to the top. I haven't done a topper yet. What I did do was the last little bit, I took some curling ribbon, some gold curling ribbon uh, for wrapping paper and wrap top and then dangled, dangled some, curled it, glued it to the end a couple different places all the way down the tree to give it a little bit of bling. Now you can leave it as is minus the topper, we still have to do the topper. Um, and you can do anything as a topper. You know, I was thinking about getting a pine cone, actually, just to do it on the top. Uh, we can add, we can do the, um, which I might do because it gives it a little bit more bling. You know, we can add some more of these. Oops, let me flip that over. Not too many, 
but enough to give it just a little hint of some Christmas bling. Except my stinky butt, because they're so small, I'm not going to use my fingers. I'm actually going to just use a, a, a pair of uh, tweezers to um, put them on. So, way I don't burn myself again. So, we'll cut a couple of these up. Like I said, not too many. Good grief. See? There we go. Find them. And we'll do these probably just on. We got one there. So let's do one right here. I definitely do not want to burn my fingers again. Let's see if I can do this left handed. Oops. Okay, we'll put one up here. Grab another one. Put one right here. And turn it. Uh, we'll put one right here. Oops, that one went flying. <laughs> Reminds me of that scene in Pretty Woman where she's trying to open up the I don't know if it was an oyster or a clam or whatever, and the thing shot right out of her hands and across the room, and the waiter caught it or something. Nature D. He was like, oops. <laughs> I was like, yeah, it happens to all of us. Let's put one down here. We got two more, so uh, put one right here. There we go. And we'll put one close, whoops. One close to the top. Might do a couple more. Put that off to the side. See, there's just a couple little little blings here and there. Um, that one's being hidden. Pull the ribbon around. You know, and you can decorate it any way you want, or you can just leave it plain and simple with the uh, just the paper. Um, but yeah, that's my paper scrap Christmas tree. Not my idea. I said I, if I remember right, I got it out of a magazine, but maybe not. It could have been Pinterest. But uh, and there we go. Thank you for joining me. Uh, I hope everybody has a wonderful day. Always remember to find the humor in life, because if you don't, life sucks. And uh, give me a thumbs up, like this, subscribe, share the video if you find it interesting enough to pass that along to some of your other friends who maybe not have any idea what to do with scraps or, you know, maybe it just gives them inspiration to do something different. On that note, everybody have a wonderful day and I'll see you next time. God bless.